Welcome to ETAV webinar, Seamless Transition of Microgrids from Grid Connected to Islanded Mode. So let's just start with talking about the need of a microgrid control system. So when we are talking about the microgrid, uh, there are uh, several main attributes to it. The first one is the resiliency, and that's basically is the fact that the microgrid is able to operate in both grid connected and islanded mode. Uh, and in case of any problem on the grid side, the microgrid is able to island itself and be able to operate or at least provide service to the critical loads and utilize the available distributed energy resources, the green uh, energy to feed the critical loads and sustain till the utility or the grid is back or main grid is back and be able to reconnect back to the system. Another key attribute of the microgrid is that the microgrid concept makes the combinations of the distributed energy resources and loads together be more grid friendly. Okay, there are typically several requirements at the point of interconnections of the microgrid to the main grid. And uh, uh, what the microgrid control system does, it basically make, meets those requirements and makes sure that the microgrid is grid friendly. Let's say that there's typically a constraints on that the microgrid is, let's say, not supposed to export any power to the grid at certain locations. So the job of the microgrid controller system is to make sure that in case of the excess of the renewable power as compared to the lows, it utilizes, let's say, the energy storage to absorb the extra active power and make sure that there is no export power to the grid. There are also requirements on the active reactive power supports during the disturbances to the system as well. Another aspect of the uh, microgrid is the efficiency. Typically, a microgrid control system allows to optimally utilize the renewable energy resources uh, typically, by having an energy storage, you can do a peak shaving, you can do price arbitrage, and you can make a mockery more efficient. You can make the usage of the renewables more efficient in a microgrid concept. Now, in order to make, let's say, these three attributes, resiliency, grid friendly, and efficiency, to be achieved, a control system is required. And uh, typically, uh, the key assets of the, this um, control system is a microgrid controller. So what is microgrid controller? Microgrid controller is a supervisory controller that can be physically implemented in a centralized or distributed manners. In a typical configuration, microgrid controller system is realized by a microgrid controller that is located close to a microgrid point of interconnections or point of common coupling. Now, this controller communicates with the local controllers of renewables, energy storage, uh, conventional generations, loads, and uh, directly or indirectly uh, controls those dispatchable assets, as well as it uh, communicates with the point of interconnection assets, uh, again, directly or through some other meters like uh, circuit breaker switches, and tries to basically achieve all those three main attributes that we discussed in the previous slide. Make sure that it can operate in both grid connected and islanded, and also it makes the microgrid grid friendly, as well as we can do optimizations to make sure that uh, we are running the renewables efficiently in the system. Microgrid controller specifications. So IEEE issued a standard in 2017, 2030.7, uh, which is the which is a technical specifications and requirements for microgrid controllers. As per this standard, three levels of control functions are defined for the microgrid control system. Level one control functions are lower level functions that are supposed to be implemented at uh, DERs, loads, or device level. Uh, you see that the voltage and control frequency, real and reactive power control, the device specific functions. Uh, level two control functions are the ones required at the microgrid point of interconnection level to facilitate transition between grid connected and islanded modes of operations, as well as rules to, let's say, dispatch microgrids. Uh, the level three control functions are higher level functions that perform supervisory control. A microgrid controller can typically provide level two and level three functions uh, together. Some of the level two is not all of them. 
let's say in this list, you see that there are supervisory, uh, distributed management system, operator interface, grid and market, optimal dispatch, communications. And uh, typically, uh, typical microgrid is supposed to provide some level of optimal dispatch. It does some level of a scatter for that microgrid and communication as well. As per IEEE 2030.7 standard, there are four possible transitions. Uh, unplanned islanding, uh, it's shown in this graph as T1, planned islanding T2, reconnect T3, and black star T4. Let's quickly go through each one and try to understand what each transition is. So basically, if a microgrid happens to be in an islanded mode, either due to trip of the circuit breaker due to the fault next to the point of interconnections, or due to loss of grid at certain point and back feeding from microgrid to the grid, uh, uh, typically voltage drops and things like that, that uh, we realize at a point of interconnection that actually the grid support is lost. So we immediately trip the second breaker uh, at the point of interconnection. So all these conditions are typically the result in the islanded case. Uh, and, and typically, if there is no island request ahead of time, that's considered as the T1, which is an unplanned islanding. Uh, in contrary, if uh, the, there is a need to do, let's say, some maintenance at the uh, certain point, uh, certain part of the utility, and we want to go to the islanded mode, the, then there could be a request to a microgrid control system, and then the microgrid control system prepares the microgrid ahead of time. And at the time that it's supposed to go islanded, it makes a very smooth and perfect islanding to minimize the disturbance to the system, which this calls plan islanding, which is the T2. Okay. When microgrid runs in the islanded mode and then the utility comes back and the voltage remains stable for a certain amount of time, the frequency is good, uh, the harmonic content and everything is good at the utility side, then the microgrid controller can uh, automatically reconnect the microgrid back to the system and bring back the uh, non-critical loads, or it can be through the um, confirmations and requests by operator to reconnect back to the system. Also, uh, anytime that microgrid uh, blacks out, whether the unplanned islanding was not successful uh, or the reconnect even sometimes not successful, we go to the blackout. And then what happens is that either we start uh, 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 start the assets one at a time based on a very unique or customized scheme to bring the assets back to the system and energize the microgrid. Or if the utility is available and the reconnect originally was not successful, we do a core load pickup, we energize the microgrid from the utility size and then we bring back the asset one, uh, one at a time. Thank you for your attention.